look at these bees and I'll just run to give a quick rundown of the equipment that we use. I always use a suit. You don't have to. You can just use a head harness that keeps the bees from biting your face. A lot of times they won't sting you unless they're in an aggressive mood. But just for safety, I always wear a full jacket, gloves, and that's real good about keeping the bees from stinging you in the face or arms or legs and all that stuff. Always wear long pants. The other thing you use is you use a hive tool or a pry bar. That's how we open the hive. We'll see that in a second. Then the most important thing I think of everything is the smoker. If you don't smoke the bees, they get really aggressive and we smoke them first. So let's walk over. And it causes you to go down into the hive, collect home, or collect honey there. And it keeps them from coming after you. They usually don't bother you much because they've got all the resources that they need and they're pretty happy. This right here is a pretty decent colony. It's a new colony. I did a split on it a couple weeks ago. But they seem to be thriving already. We're going to go over some of the bees here. Now, we pull the frame out. You always inspect it to look for the queen because you do not want to hurt the queen because there's only one queen in a hive. She's usually a little bit bigger than all the other bees, or always bigger. And the majority of the bees in the hive that are workers are all female. If you look here, these are all worker bees. That right there is baby bees in the comb. And what they do is they take care of them, they make sure they're fed, they bring them food, and then they'll close the comb up to where they can incubate the rest of the way. The bees flap their wings when it's hot, and they ball up when it's cold to keep the hive a specific temperature. And that's how they create the honey. And that's how they incubate the baby bees. I'm gonna try to find you a queen in here. We're gonna find one, I can feel it. Uh, you don't see many drones on the hive this time of year. There are a few. I'm gonna try to find a better example here in a second. But, um, <laughs> you can tell uh, that's probably where the queen's at. See how they jump around? There's a drone right there. See how much bigger he is? Two of them. Their only job is to eat up resources and to actually breed the queen. There's another drone. They're good for nothing. <laughs> Let's see here. So are the drones males? They're males, right? Because you yeah, said the they, drones are they, all males. And because they have to have the male and the female yep. sexual reproduction. And what happens is when a queen is born, the hive will raise a queen every so many years, or if the queen gets sick or dies. And then when she is born, she walks around the hive for a couple days. I think they call it the queen's walk or whatever. And um, then what happens is she flies outside of the hive hmm, and gets bred by one of these drones. She gets bred once in her life. And then she's usually good for about three years. And the queen usually lasts three to five years after that before they need to replace her again. Sometimes the beekeepers will replace a queen every two years just to make sure the hive stays strong because it's not all about just letting the bees go. You need a lot of bees to pollinate like this peach orchard here and stuff like that. And if the queen starts getting weaker and older, they can't lay as many eggs. The queen's in there. They've been trying to get her out, but this hive's so weak they can't. This was packed full of sugar. And what happens is, is they chew the sugar out and then eventually let the queen out. Well, this queen's been in here for three days unreleased, so we're going to release her right now. And maybe we can get a look at her when she comes out. She's coming. That's really cool.
Is that her coming out? Nope, she's coming right out the bottom. There she is. See how big she is? Mm -hmm. And she's not colored the same as the rest. Yeah, she's got a longer abdomen. You can always tell the queen when you see her, they really stand out. See, they're all happy to see her. They're like, hey, come on. Let's raise some more babies, uh, whatever. And see, they're accepting her. If they wouldn't have accepted her, she'd already be dead because what would have happened is they would have got around that cage and they would have smothered her with heat. But see how they're all coming up to her? They're all excited to have her. So, you got to see the first queen. Oh, see, there's a queen in this house. You know how I know? She's out of there, huh? No. Because they killed this queen. Let me push her out and knock her on. So they busted in there and killed her. No, what happens is that's her. There's apparently a queen in the hive. She's not doing a good job. That's why I put the queen in there. This usually to me shows, I'll show you a bad pattern. Okay, you see the honey in there? Um, I see stuff in the there. The wet, wet stuff? That's wet comb. They're turning that into honey. But see the, see the way the laying pattern is? Spotty? Yeah. To me, that shows that this is a bad queen. She's not doing a very good job. See that? This hive's gonna not last very long with a queen like that. Okay, fresh brood. You're about to see it. You gotta watch out for the older bees. Sometimes they just wanna die and they'll come out and sting you. Okay, you see in that, there's little larva. Like up in here? Mm -hmm. That's a brood. The brood that's capped is cap brood. That means those bees are about to be born. Okay. Now, you really look really, 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 really close at these hives that look, the holes that look empty. And you look in there, you'll see little eggs down in the bottom. You can't hardly see them. I can see something down in them. Yeah, that's the baby eggs. From start to finish, I believe it's 21 days. Like chickens. Yeah. Now the queen's faster though, because if this hive had no queen in it, which it does because you can see all the fresh brood, these bees would take one of those eggs, they'd feed it royal jelly, and then the 14 days later, well, right away you'll see where they'll put a queen cell and they'll hang off the front of the hive like a peanut and then there'll be a queen in there and they feed it royal jelly and it makes the queen grow from just a regular worker bee it becomes a, a queen queen very cool it's really neat how that happens because it's just the amount of protein they give it in certain countries like china they um they actually harvest the royal jelly for people to eat because they think it'll make them healthier this is a this is what i put the sugar water in so we'll do that here. So we're going to add fructose to this hive. If I can get in here and turn it. And the bees will eat this. And it'll strengthen the hive. Because I notice there's not much honeycomb in here. That means they're hungry. Usually it does anyway. So how do they get the sugar out of there? Out of this? What they do, the bees take this just like nectar. Uh -huh. They stick their little tongue in it and they suck it up and then they stick it in the comb. So they hold it in their mouth and then they come back and usually they spit it out in there and then they somebody spit it else. In there. And then what happens is what makes the honey is the bees are always regulating the temperature in the hive. So they're basically dehydrating the nectar or the sugar water okay. or the fructose. And then the other thing that happens is you notice not many people sell honeycomb anymore. The reason why is it takes a lot of resources to make the honeycomb. It takes sugar to build this comb. And um, a lot of beekeepers, they don't want to have to do that and replace the comb constantly because it really takes a lot out of their hive. But now what will happen is these bees will crawl down in here and they'll drain that. Some more commercial beekeepers will drill a hole on top of the hive 
and stick an upside down gallon bucket on it with a couple holes in it and it'll drip out. And it lasts about a week if you do a gallon. This will last about two weeks when I do it that way. That's why I do it that way. I try not to feed my bees, except when they really got to have it. Because I feel like I would rather the strong survive because I'm not trying to make money off this. It's more like a hobby. And then I don't have to do as much work to keep the hives going. Kind of like survival of the fittest. Okay, so are they hungry right now because it's they're just coming off of winter and yeah. there wasn't anything blooming for a long time? There wasn't a lot blooming and with a with a hot with a hive like when everything's blooming you'll see you'll see a little bit of honey in there. Like this hive here is a brand new hive. I just started this one a couple weeks ago and it was practically dead right now. But I'm pretty sure when you look at a hive like this, you're like, oh crap, this hive's dying. But you know there's a queen in it because there's fresh brood in here. See that? Mm -hmm. That can't be older than 21 days. So you know that there's a queen in here laying eggs. I don't know where she's at. There she is. Mm -hmm. You see her? Yep. That's how big she is. Big, beautiful queen. She's in there laying eggs and doing the best she can to keep the hive growing. step back in there we don't want to hurt her because this is a very fragile hive right now but we pour the sugar to them the queen will lay more eggs they'll build more cone they'll have more place to put resources and then they can make it through the hot summer that's the other thing you gotta worry about is summer dirge when nothing's blooming and it's really hot so late through. july through like september july august i think this summer is going to be worse I think it is too. That's why I got, I've started feeding them now. I want them to build up these hives. I might have to get more of these reservoirs too. Yeah, we got another queen to release over there, I think. We got them, they're loving it. So they just come and get some right off the top. It's not like they have to get it out of the side or anything. No, they'll crawl down and there's little nets in there for them to walk down. So if it gets to the bottom, they can still walk down. Very cool. Now it's come out the hives that were really strong one day, come out a week later, and these are all dead. They call it colony collapse disorder. Mm -hmm. Is what I think is really causing it is pesticides killing bees but like a lot of people use colony collapse disorders and it's used to file claims on their beehives and if they can mm -hmm. prove colony collapse or say colony collapse there's federal grant money to replace their bees well a lot of times what happens here is you'll have hive beetles get in a hive like i don't see any hive beetles i haven't seen any yet which is a really good thing but what the hive beetles do is they'll come out, lay eggs in the hive, and at first you'll just see a few beetles. I always like to piece my hives to where they're all close. It helps the bees regulate the temperature. And see these bees out here are cleaning this comb off and rebuilding the comb. See here? It's all getting built out. I can see it on the one side. But now if we came out in two weeks after pouring this sugar water in here, you'd see a big difference. So why does it look like it's burnt? Because the queen was on that. Whatever comb the queen's on has that black color to it. Because she's laying a deep super right here. And this is what you call a medium super. This is where we usually collect the honey from. Now you're going to see some honey on this one. Some pretty honey too. Look at that. You know, I don't eat honey. Are you kidding me? Mm -mm. You're really missing out. You want to try some? I will. I mean, I don't hate it or anything. I just don't. I, don't know. I like regular old sugar, I guess. Just stick your. Mm-mm. <laughs> Here, I'll give you a better shot. 
to see how they're doing. Just that? stick your hand in there. No, thank you. Yeah, I gotta wait for you to do it. See, this is an aggressive hog right here. See how much better production it has there? Mm hmm. Let's try that when you get a chance. This hive's really good. Actually, I'm gonna put. Oh, I didn't bring my truck. I put another box on top of this one. What we'll do is something different. And you might want to stand back because I'm gonna put sugar in here. So why do you have the difference, the short one versus the longer one? The short ones are used for collecting the honey in usually because they're just easier to lift when they're full of honey. Because when it's full of honey, it weighs about 50 pounds. Just a little one. So the big one would probably weigh closer to 50 or 60, 70. I like the big ones because so you get more honey out of them. This thing right here by itself will weigh 50. Okay, so it's the whole deal. It's more like 40 because if this is totally full, it'll hold roughly two and a half gallons of honey. And each gallon of honey, I believe, weighs 12 pounds. So that would be 24 plus, it's about 32 pounds plus the wood, right at 50. So this is about double the size, so it would probably Close to about four pounds. gallons of, to four and a half gallons of honey. So that would be 60, ballpark. Sometimes you gotta straighten little things up in the hive. It's kinda like housekeeping. If you don't, when you come into it one day, it'll be really hard to get into because everything will be stuck in together and they'll be built home in all the wrong places and it's just not easy to deal with. So right there, you can look at the hive until it needs a boost. Because it, even though we're pollinating this blueberry field and this peach orchard, um, a lot of agricultural type blooms don't put out a lot of nectar. So they need a little extra. But the one good thing about all these hives is I don't see any sign of disease or hive beetles, any of that mess. And that stuff is so difficult to deal with. Once you get hive beetles, you can't get rid of them. Ever, ever? Well, you can. You can, you can put like dryer sheets in there or little hive beetle traps and they'll fall in them and it will limit them. But it's still hard to get them out. They're still, they get prolific. <laughs> 